Hello students, welcome to the Psychologist NDTV with me, Dr. Blessing Ntamu. I hope you've been doing well. Today we are going to further our discussion on the subject of motivation and we will be dealing with some theories of motivation. We'll be looking at the self-actualization theory of motivation by Abraham Maslow. This theory is a humanistic theory, sometimes classified as a cognitive theory because it's based on needs, you know. So this classification of theories is not really fine. There's no, you know, uh, absolute classification. There's sometimes overlaps. Okay, so today we're looking at the self-actualization theory and sometimes also called the hierarchy of needs theory. And this was propounded by Abraham Maslow from the 1940s. He kept modifying his theory of the hierarchy of needs you know uh, abraham maslow thought that human beings were motivated basically by their needs and he classified these needs into two broad groups you might say so the first set are the physiological or basic needs and these needs are tied to the survival of the human being and under this uh, physiological or basic needs we have the basic needs at the lower um end of the or the bottom of the hierarchy you know he used the triangle as you can see in the picture to depict this hierarchy so at the base of the triangle you have the basic needs or the physiological needs and like i said before these needs are important for our survival and they deal with needs such as food such as water such as warmth regulating your body temperature such as elimination of waste such as sex you know, and such basic needs that we need for survival and the preservation of our species. And then above that, immediately above that on the hierarchy, you have the safety needs. He believes that human beings need to feel safe. You know, so under the safety needs we need, we feel a need to have some sense of control, a need for stab stability, a need for predictability. Human beings need security, security, freedom from fear, you know, security... And this security, you know, they are both physical and uh, psychological. So we have emotional security needs. We have um, job security needs and all of these needs. And he believes that the lower needs on the hierarchy have to be satisfied before the individual begins to strive towards the satisfying the needs at the next level. Although uh, uh, as time went on, he began to modify his theory to say that it is not an all or none principle. So you do not have to satisfy all of your basic needs or you do not have to satisfy 100% of the needs at one level to move to the next level. So we've mentioned the basic needs and from the basic needs you move on to the security needs and from the security needs you move on to love and belonging needs. Every individual has a need for love. And uh, you know, he says we share this need with the higher apes, you know. So everyone needs to love and be loved, a need to belong to a group. We have that basic need to belong to a group, to feel a sense of love, you know, intimacy, a sense of trust. Human beings have these needs and it drives us. We need to belong to a group. We need to feel loved and be loved as well. You know, we need to love others as well. So that's the, at the third um, level of the hierarchy of needs. And from the love and belonging need, we move to the self-esteem need. And he said at this level, we have two levels of needs. We need respect from others. And then we also need uh, self-respect, self-esteem. So an individual needs to feel a sense of achievement, you know, and this gives us a sense of self-esteem. And so all of these needs must be satisfied before we can move on to the next level. And these four sets of needs he classified under the physiological needs, which he calls the deprivation needs or the D needs so his idea is that these needs are as a result of deprivation you know and when this deprivation is met you know then these needs become less significant and one more thing about this deprivation needs is that the higher the needs the higher the motivation but as we begin to satisfy these needs the motivation begins to drain so just to make sure that we got it um the first four level of needs in the hierarchy that's the basic or physiological needs, and then the safety or security needs, the love and belonging needs, and then the self-esteem needs are all classified as deprivation needs or D needs. And they need to be fulfilled before the individual can begin to strive towards the higher order needs. And then the other group of needs, or it's just one 
need under that category is a self-actualization need. So initially, this theory had five steps in the hierarchy. But with time, uh, Maslow modified this needs from five to seven. So he included in the growth of being needs. The growth of being needs refer to the needs at the higher, at the top of the, the hierarchy, you know. So while the first four needs are referred to as the deprivation needs, the other higher needs, depending on which um, you're looking at, whether it was when it was five levels or when it was seven levels or when he improved or he, he modified to eight levels. So after the four levels, the needs higher up are referred to as the growth needs, the growth needs or the being needs, and they're referred to as the B needs. You know, so you have to uh, satisfy the lower needs before you get to the need for self-actualization. Now let's go ahead to discuss the second set of needs, the growth and being needs, which Abraham Maslow actually called the B needs. You know, and in this category initially, Abraham Maslow only had self-actualization, but with time he modified this uh, category to include cognitive needs, and artistic needs and eventually he also added the transcendental needs above self-actualization so let's take a closer look at what this set of needs involve so for the cognitive needs it's a need to acquire knowledge a need to acquire understanding a need to explore its curiosity a need to satisfy your curiosity and all of these come under the cognitive needs. And the cognitive needs come right after the uh, self-esteem needs. You know, and then after the cognitive needs, we have the artistic needs. And this has to do with the arts, nature, beauty, you know, a need for other, you know, um, form and all of this. So anything that has to do with the arts, this falls under the aesthetic, aesthetic needs. needs. And remember that we have to satisfy the lower order needs at least to a certain level before we can begin to aspire to these other needs because when your tummy is hungry and twisting there's no way you can really appreciate the needs you know but at some point to master again modified his conceptualization of the hierarchy of needs so that it was not an absolute it's not an all or nothing principle so you must not fully and completely uh, satisfy your lower other needs before you begin to aspire to the higher other needs. And there are always exceptions as we have whenever we deal with human beings, there's individual differences. So some people, even when they have the lower other needs nudging at them, they could actually still be aspiring to the higher other needs. So there's that a room for flexibility. Now, after the cognitive needs and the artistic needs, we have the self-actualization needs. Now, according to Maslow 1968, he said, a musician must make music, an artist must paint, and a poet must write for him to achieve peace. You know, what a man can be, he must be. And I think this sums up the whole idea of self-actualization. Self-actualization actually refers to achieving our maximum potential you know, our aspirations, you know, our goals, our dreams. When we accomplish our dreams and we reach our aspirations, you know, we, 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 you say we, are, we are fully functional, we've achieved our maximum potential, we say we are self-actualized. And there are certain characteristics of a self-actualized person that we are going to discuss shortly, but we must know what self-actualization means. So you must be fully functional. You must achieve your maximum potential for you to have self-actualized. And before we can begin to aspire to self-actualization, at least to some extent, our basic needs must be fulfilled. Now, one thing we have to note about uh, this needs is that for the lower order needs, that's the deprivation needs, the deficient, deficiency needs, you know, when we satisfy them, the more we satisfy them, the less motivated we become because they serve as a motivation as long as the needs exist. So the more you, you satisfy those needs, the less um, motivated you become. And also they, they depend on the degree of deprivation. So the more deprived you are, the more motivated you are to seek out the satisfaction of these needs. But for the self-actualization needs, the more we meet these needs, the more our motivation I hope you got that. So for the deprivation needs, first of all, they depend on the degree of deprivation. The more deprived you are, 
the more motivated you are to seek satisfaction of these needs. For instance, the more hungry you are, the more motivated you are to seek out food. And when once you get this food, your motivation actually drops. But for the self-actualization needs, the more you uh, achieve these needs and accomplish these needs, the more motivated you become. So he actually said that the for the deprivation needs, there's an external or extrinsic motivation. You know, so we do not seek out the deprivation needs for their own self. We seek them out as a means to an end. So when you're seeking food, for many people, it's not the food itself you're seeking. You're just seeking to satisfy your hunger. So you're extrinsically motivated. So we seek out those basic needs for what we can get from them, the satisfaction we can get from them. You seek out food to satisfy your hunger. You know, so they are a means to an end. But for the self-actualization need, there's an intrinsic motivation. So we seek out those needs for their own sakes because they give us satisfaction, you know, because of the satisfaction that they give us and the way they make us feel. We seek them out for their own selves and engage in these behaviors for their own selves, you know. Uh, so we find these uh, behaviors, these self-actualization needs and their uh, um, uh, accompanying behaviors. We find them intrinsically satisfying. As for the transcendence needs, a person is motivated by a value that transcends beyond his personal self. There's something that is bigger than your personal self. So when we begin to have religious values or spiritual needs motivating us, or for some people, some certain mystical experiences, or for some people, you have a need to support and help other people when we begin to engage in humanitarian services, or you aspire towards some scientific um, knowledge, these are transcendence needs, you know. And these are higher than the self-actualization needs. And I hope that as we've been going through these lessons, you begin to form your own definition of motivation and create your own opinion of these things. We should learn to be critical, to have a critical mindset. So when you're taught these things, don't swallow them hook, line, and sinker. Try to analyze these theories, try, try to think about them critically, and try to form your own perspective. That's when you really begin to own the knowledge. And I think we'll stop here for today, and then we'll continue in the next video. See ya! Estet aesthetic need.